watch back on the recording. Okay. Um, so the class is now being recorded, and let me look for um, Daniel. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. It's been a minute, right? <laughs> um, Alejandro. Hey. Uh, Rebecca. Bless you. Alexander. Um, Adriana, I did not see you, Adriana, actually, I think that's the one that I'm doing. Um, Adrian, yes, sir. Uh, Benjamin, I did not see yet, anyway. And then Alexandra might be trying a little bit late. Now, online, I do have Jamie or Jaime. Um, I'm missing Trevor. I have Alma. Uh, Justin, uh, Patricia, Anthony, and Victoria. Awesome. Okay, so the way it's going to work for the first go round, because we are covering multiple sections today, um, I am going to try my best to keep the camera in the right position. So those of you that are in Zoom, if the camera is not in a good spot, let me know. I can move it over. For instance, if we start working on number four, for example, four for 5.1, I can try to move that over just a little bit. Uh, we may even reposition them to a more uh, beneficially <laughs> viewable spot. Um, I think I prefer where example one is at. That one seems to be coming out pretty clear on the video. Um, so if we have to shift the papers around, it's not a bad, you know, it's not too bad. That's why I put them on the sticky notes. So that I can kind of maneuver things around so that everything is optimal for viewing later. Okay. Um, but these are the examples that I picked for section 5.1. If you found anything else extra that you wanted to discuss, uh, those of you that are in Zoom, you can just type in the problems, especially if they're from the homework. Just tell me what homework problem they are. And then those of you that are in the face to face, if you also have um, questions from the homework that you wanted to discuss, but you don't see sort of a similar thing on the board right now for 5.1. We'll talk about those. So the way I'm going to do it today is I'm going to have you guys, we're small here, right? So we're going to work in groups and I'm going to have those of you that are in class work on example one together. And those of you that are online, I'm actually going to mute my computer. Uh, the only way I'm going to come off of mute is if I see somebody raise their hand. Okay, so in Zoom at the bottom, you have these options where you can, um, something's going on with my screen, there it goes, where you have like this reactions button. Um, and just to test it out, I want you to go ahead and click the reactions button and then click raise your hand just to make sure that it works for everyone in case someone wanted to come off of the mute. So you guys will have to come off of mute with each other, okay? But I am going to mute my computer so that those that are working in the face-to-face -face class do not hear your voices <laughs> as they're trying to work on example one, okay? And then when we come to write the solution for example two, I will unmute my computer. It will be on the recording and everything, okay? Uh, so if you can, for the moment, please try to click the raise hand button just to make sure that the feature works for everyone. Right. There we go. So I don't see any raised hands. You guys want to come off of mute and let me know if you're having any trouble finding where to raise your hand. It shows uh, everybody <laughs> raised. In my screen, it has the little hand that I'm raising my hand. Hmm. Show it on my end. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to write that up. Oh, it just took a second. There it goes. I see Justin and Jaime have raised hands. Now I see everyone. So it might be just a little bit of a delay. So be patient with me. Uh, go ahead and click on the raise hand again. It should make it go away. Um. And so then we're gonna use that that as a practice. Okay. So as you guys are working on example two in Zoom. Um, if you do have a question or you want to ask me something, then just 
somebody or even all of y'all <laughs> raise your hand and then I will come off of mute and that way we can address your questions. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I know it's a little bit weird to get used to at first, right? All of us. <laughs> so those of you that are in front of me are trying to get used to what's happening in Zoom. And those of you in Zoom are going to have to get used to what's happening face to face. But I think after we kind of get a flow with everything, it should be a lot faster. Okay. So we won't be sitting here quietly for too long. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and mute you guys. Again, you're working on example two. Y'all will need to come up with mute, discuss it amongst each other and even choose someone to be your voice, okay? Because when we come back to you guys in Zoom, uh, I'm gonna have someone from the class go over uh, the voice, go over example one, and then I'll need somebody to be that voice for example two. So you guys chat amongst yourselves and decide who's gonna be the one that you know talks out the solution, um, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm going to meet you guys and we will work our way eventually to 5.3. Okay, so for you guys, you guys, um, if you want to work on your papers by yourselves, that's fine, but I would prefer for you guys to work on the board. You guys can scribble on any of the whiteboard space if you want to. Oh, okay. Um, I would suggest that you kind of try to figure out what's going on. And then write on here, if that makes sense, right? So if any of you have any ideas, you can share with each other, talk it out. But you definitely want to get some engagement. Okay. So we're muted on um, in class, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I think we are now. Okay. All right. So um, is that theta uh, to the sixth power? Yep. So. Obviously, we'll go theta to the seventh power and then divide it by seven for that first one. Yep. And then for and the second part, what, what are we doing there? I think um, that secant squared, I think the anti derivative so, in uh, I think you have tangent. Uh, I don't think they see right. Is that a two above that? Yeah, I think it's a two. I, I think I so. Muted. Yeah, because I was thinking it was like a one. So yeah, so where is I don't see any of their speakers. So let me give it to like a little bit. Plus tan tangent theta. And then we do the plus theta for <clears throat> for the constant. I thought it was uh plus c. Well, on in five point one when she goes over it in uh, um online to the module she puts theta at the end instead of c oh, okay so it would be um theta to the seventh power over seven plus tangent theta plus theta yep that's it all right cool Who wants to be the the voice? I can do it. It's fine. All right, cool.
Did we just get locked out of class? I don't see the screen no more. Yeah, I don't, I don't see the teacher's name in there. <laughs> but I think we're just kind of all alone now. <laughs> we call back I feel like what she did was put us in one giant group because I've done this in a, another class where you couldn't see anything but other than the other names that she put you in but I don't think she knew that we couldn't see the board <laughs> right so. and that's what I'm thinking too like I think she placed us in a group but I mean I know I previous I class I I've been able to <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I guess next time we'll just have to write down the uh, question before. Yeah. She, mm -hmm. she's the group.
So yeah, I went back and looked at her video, and you are correct. That's not theta at the end there. That's it's constant it's with the c. Oh, okay. Uh, I was, I th I thought it was c. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. I because when you said that, I had to second guess myself, so I ran back and looked at her video real quick. But you're right. All is right, it, cool. Is it okay if I can confirm my answer with one of y'all? I don't know if. No, yeah, for sure. We're all in group. Let me know. Okay, so I got a uh, theta power to the seven over seven plus tan theta plus C. Correct. That's yep. it. Thank you. Be nice if we can get back to class. I text her on the remind me app to see what she says, if she says anything. Cool, because I logged out and then I logged in and I was like in the waiting room. So I don't know, maybe we are like in a group or something. Right. Yeah.
Oh, there's the teacher. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yes. you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Anything weird just happened? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> by our lonesome here. I don't know what happened, but my Zoom froze. And then when I tried to unfreeze it, it kind of locked me out. So you might have seen like the board disappear or something like that on my camera. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Do you see? There we go. It's yeah. back up. Okay. Good. Um, were you guys finished with number two by any chance? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm going to have these guys go over example one for you, um, and then we'll go over to example two so you guys can explain that one. Uh, make sure that you pin the video so that when they're explaining it, you can kind of follow along on the board. Um, they rewrote it in green for me, but that was just for me. That's why it's really small. <laughs> but they'll point to everything that they need to from the red stuff that's on the board. Okay. So does anybody <laughs> Here. Don't be shy. We're all learning together. I always tell students this is not the point of judgment. My judgment time is when I'm doing the test, right? Right now, you can make all the mistakes in the world <laughs> and doesn't ever count against you. Okay, we're here to just learn. Um, so anybody want to try this one? Well, I think I'll understand. Awesome, yes. <laughs> so just walk through these steps? Yes, just walk through the steps. Walk through them in red just because they're more visible. All right. <laughs> I can zoom in. No, don't have to. Okay. There we go. All right, so the first part we separated the, the main integral into two separate fractions. Second part. Oh, we changed the yes. square root of x to basically like an exponent and say just the square root. Everything else stayed the same. Next part. Oh, we changed it. Oh, here we separated it into two different integrals instead of just one. Oh, you see that? The yeah. very next part. Oh, we subtracted these exponents because we made it to one, one number, one, I don't know. What expression. Call it, one expression. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Instead of a fraction, we did the x to the one divided by x to the one half, gave us x to the one half. On the second integral, we took out the seven, put it out front. So that left us with one over x squared, or x to the one half. So the very next part. Nothing happened in the first term. Oh, okay. The second term, we changed it into one expression, just like we did. This one. We changed that one into one. We did one over x to the one half, made it into x to the negative one half. So there's no fraction anymore over there. Afterwards, oh, okay. We did the, uh, Actual integral, the what is it? I don't know how you power rule. The, was right. the power rule. Uh huh. The power rule of integration, you got it. And so it's whatever our exponent is plus one. So that gave us three over two instead of the one over two. And then that's the same for the denominator. So that seems like we did it. So you add oh, okay. one to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. That same exponent. That same okay. one. Yeah. I see that. Okay. And we added C. So we took out the integral part and the dx. Now it's just those plus C. And then instead of dividing by a fraction, he multiplied by the reciprocal. Yeah, flip the bottom and then multiply them together. That's what, what's this asking? I don't understand. It's just he marked it where he continued. Oh, okay. it's just the note. <laughs> so he just wrote it out as the, the whole problem. After that, we ended up with two thirds x to three over two. So that's 14 x to the one half plus that's it. Thank you. Thank you for doing that for me.
Now, does anybody in the Zoom, do any of y'all have any questions about those steps? If you notice all the stuff in blue, that was the stuff that I was writing while they were working on the problem, just to kind of recap power rules. So like when you divide two things that have the same base, you subtract their exponents, right? They did that. Um, and then I even wrote that power rule that they applied on the left-hand side. Uh, does anybody have any questions? No? Okay, well, we're gonna go on to number two. And what I'm gonna do for number two is I will write your solution on there eventually. Um, but what I want you guys to do is whoever is going to be the voice, um, I need you guys to use the white paper. So what I, whoever is going to be the voice, I want you to go where it says share screen, click on that, and then click on whiteboard. Okay, and then you'll basically try to write out what it was y'all did in as a class. Okay. Click on what? It won't let you. No, I'm I'm asking what what do I click on again? Um, you will click on share screen and share actually screen. let me enable it because I think it's disabled right now for students. Give me one second. Um, there we go. So go to where it says share screen in the Zoom settings. Oh yeah, and then whiteboard. And then click whiteboard. Awesome. And then now you can scribble away with your mouse or if you have a stylus. <laughs> you can oh, go first. No, bear with me on this one. Sure. No, I totally understand. It's, it's tricky. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> this is going to take a minute. <laughs> You're doing great. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right, so here's here's the problem. So it's kind of a short and sweet fix, uh, problem here. We um, we didn't we obviously don't get as much as do as much work as the, the past one, but uh, right. Um, we're gonna do first of all what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, power rule of this one. So we're gonna add one to the top. So it'd be seven. Divide it by seven, and then plus secant squared theta, which secant squared is uh, turns out to be tangent. So it's going to be plus. Guys, for the, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you real quick while you write. Um, for those of you that had looked at the derivatives and integrals file online, or for those of you that are in class that have it in front of you, it's actually number fourteen. The rule that they're applying. So when you integrate secant squared on by itself, he's right. It does come out to tangent. Okay. So it comes. So uh, secant squared theta comes out to tangent theta, and uh, at this point, we're just going to add our constant. So it's going to be plus c. Perfect. Thank you. And that's it. Well, I didn't realize that that was going to be so short, but I'm kind of glad it did. It was. Yeah. You know, this <laughs> If you want to see that problem, that's going to be kind of hard. <laughs> good, 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 good. So sorry if you guys are on silent for, for a little bit extra. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to move, um, I'm going to erase what's on the board right now, and then I'm going to move example three over and example four over so that you guys can see it really good. Um, and then you guys will work on example four while the folks in class will work on example three. Does that make sense? Okay. And if you want, I can actually, you can clear this whiteboard and do all of your scribbles. I don't know if you want to be described. Anyone can do it. Okay. Now that you've shared your screen, you can stop sharing your screen and someone else can share their screen so that we have a different um, voice for this one. Um, and you can scribble on here all you want. <laughs> that way you don't have to redo it when we come off of these. If that makes sense. Okay. So give me one second. I'm going to... Um, move the papers around and then we'll, we'll go from there okay 
Yeah, I remember. Perfect. Yeah. Well, they're using the whiteboard, so they probably won't need this extra paper. But we're going to stick it up here for me later. Okay, so you guys should be able to see number four clearly. Do you guys see that pretty good? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to meet you guys again. And whoever's going to be the scribe, I would highly recommend that you scribble down <laughs> that problem real quick and then use your whiteboard to start doing all the scribbling. So you don't have to redo it while we're um, talking. Okay, but I'm going to meet you guys. Again, if you need me, raise your hand so that I can see and then I'll come over. It does have slight delay. So give me about two or three minutes after you raise your hand for me to see it and come over. Okay. So I guess we're muted. So I guess we start off by finding the antiderivatives of the um, 12x minus 12x squared. Yep. Right? Okay. Yep. Um, so the antiderivative of 12x would just be 12. Or wait. It'd be. 12 or x squared divided by well 12 x squared divided by two right yep 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 and then um the next one would be uh negative 12 x to the third divided by three yep and then just plus c and then plus c and then to break that down a little further it's going to be uh 12 divided by two is so it's going to be six x squared minus uh 4x to the, the third, third. Yep. c and then at this point we know that our y is nine so we plug in a zero where the x's are and set the equation equal to nine right uh yeah that's it yep so uh six zero squared that's obviously going to be zero minus uh, four zero to a third that's zero and then you have plus c which that's where your nine goes so uh it's literally nine, nine. yep uh, yep and then nine equals c so everybody got that everybody's good So, I think so, yeah. Yep, all good here. So, who wants to write it out? Uh, I, I guess I could. All right. Uh, I have no problem doing it again, but if you want to go for it, go for it. I think I got it. Um, can you see that? Yep, yep. Oh man, this is hard. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna take a minute. Okay. And it was, 
Voilà ici. Are you trying to write out the problem? No, yeah, I was just, I, was, I thought there was a, uh, something else, but now, okay, there we go. And then it's, uh, oh, this is like this, right? Uh, actually, I don't think you need to put that. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, no, you're right. So I think um, the first part where we left off is you'll put that little squiggly line and then it'll be F uh, with the dash at the top there. You basically write out the problem and then it will be equal to um, actually, no. Let me see. Go ahead, and, go, ahead and, go ahead and keep going. I think you're on the right track. Twelve x, and then it's n minus. Because once we apply the c at the end, you don't put that squiggle line at the very beginning. And it was yeah yeah I think you're right. Um, Twelve x. Cool. Yep. And then it is. Put the equal sign at the very beginning of that. Oh, yeah, you're right. There you go. And then. I guess. Oh, wait, we're supposed to simplify it. Yeah, let's simplify a little bit more. And it was. Uh... Maybe six x squared. Minus four. Third. Then you plug it in. Perfect. And then just... And it'd just be nine equals C. There we go. Done. Perfect. Yep. All right, cool. Thanks for your help, by the way. No problem. We're all in it together. Yep.
Okay, guys, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, are you guys finished? Almost finished? Where are you guys in the process? We're done. We're yeah, done. We wrote it all out on the whiteboard thing. I was telling you guys, you think you're done, but you're not done yet. Do you know why? Because we didn't raise our hands. You have not told me what f of x is. What is oh. f of x? Just screw it on the side if you can. Just write f of x equals and then sx. Squared minus four x cubed plus nine. Uh -huh. No, it's four x, not forty four. <laughs> okay, good. So write it over here on the side. Um, let me see. I don't know if I have controls. Let's see if I do. Oh, I do have controls. Yay! This is ugly, but. <laughs> So your final answer should, again, excuse my writing because it looks horrible, right? But you're right, you should have plus nine and not plus eight, right? Oh, oh, okay, I see. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that you pin me for now in my video again. Um. I'm going to pin it just so that the whiteboard's in the background for just a second. And then actually, I can't. Okay, fine. You guys are going to have to present your solution first. And then that way, I can make the whiteboard go away. But I don't want to undo all of y'all's hard work and then not get the whiteboard back. So go ahead and um, whoever was the voice for this one, go ahead and start from the beginning and talk us out for that one. So I'll read the problem. The problem does say find a particular solution of the differential equation that satisfies the initial condition f prime of x equal to 12x minus 12x squared, which you have written down. And then the condition was um, f of zero equals nine. So walk us through the steps that you took. All right. So First, we started by finding the antiderivatives of both uh, 12x and then negative 12x squared. Um, and once we did that, uh, we simplified them down right here. And uh, we knew that f of zero is equal to nine. So we just set the equation equal to nine and then plugged in zero to where the x's were to find c. And then uh, we forgot this, I forgot the step and uh, it was to add the nine to the end um, right here where C was. Right, because you found it, awesome. Yep. Okay, great. Now, does anybody have any questions? Because I know you guys talked, um, I'm gonna write in red just so I can point out. I know that you guys talked out how you did this, uh, but do you guys sitting in the classroom see how they got these things? So they didn't write the step where they, took the 12 out to the front, but they did. And then they basically integrated X, which turned out to be this, right, with the power rule. And then the same thing here, you would have taken this 12 out to the front, and then you would have integrated X cubed, which according to that power rule, you get that fraction, right? And so then they just simplified, right? 12 divided by two is six, 12 divided by three is four, right? And you have that function there. Did you, did you understand the last part of it, though, with the 0 and the 9? Right? It says f of 0 equals 9. So the x was 0, but the y was 9. Right? So they put in all their zeros, plug in 9 for y, or fancy name for y, f of x. And then they got the c. The only thing they were missing was just writing out the final final answer. You have to write the actual number you found for c. Okay. But good, good, good. Perfect. I'm going to close. It is on the <laughs> on the record since our, our class in here is being recorded. But I am going to stop the sharing. Or actually, whoever's in control, whose who screen is this? There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so let me zoom in over here. And then Rebecca can hear our voice and go over this one. Let me get in there so that they can. There we go. 
I forgot to do backwards. There you go. Go ahead. So start with what the original. The original problem is the integral six sine of x minus eight e of x dx. So first you start, you break them up. So the integral of six sine of x dx minus the integral of eight e of x dx. And then you take the what was that fancy word you used earlier? Which one? That's what the D. Constant. That constant. Numbers in front of letters. I can't remember. Coefficient. Coefficient. Yes. So you take the coefficient and you put it in front of the integral. And then you just rewrite the problem. So six integral sine of x dx minus eight integral e of x dx. And then you do the antiderivative. So six, the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine x. And then minus eight, the, the antiderivative of e of x is e of x. And then you have a c. So you get negative six cosine x minus eight e of x plus e. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Does anybody in the Zoom class have any questions about that? If you're looking at the files, I'm actually going to share my screen real quick because what I've been doing is we've been referring to those formulas. So give me one second. I know Zoom acts really weird sometimes. It just takes forever to do anything. And regardless of whether you're in the remote or the online, you should still see the same thing in your modules other than this link right here. Uh, but this formula, calculus formulas. So it does have the old school derivative ones up there, but we were referring to these guys. So like for sine, we use rule eight, which is right here. So it was negative cosine. And then I think for you guys, y'all use rule 14, right? And then what was the other one that we used? Oh, six for e to the x. So that was rule six. Okay. So it's always nice to refer back to old rules just so that we know where we're at um, and we know how things are becoming the next line, okay? Um, I used to get, just a personal story, I used to get, a, well, I have a lot of test anxiety. So at the beginning of my college <laughs> career or whatever, I would get really bad grades in math, like 50. Even though I could do all the homework by myself, I would check in the back of the book, everything was perfect. But I would still have such a large test anxiety that when I got in the classroom, I bombed the test. I eventually learned some little quirks that helped me out um, to help get me past that. But then after that, I started getting 100 on my test. And the students would always ask me, my, my peers at the, at the time, how'd you get 100? <laughs> and essentially, the only thing I did was is I justified every single step that I took. So if I took a step, I wrote down on the side what rule I was applying. If I took another step, I wrote down what property or theorem or whatever it was that I was applying so that I knew that I wasn't doing anything wrong. I wasn't making things up. I was doing exactly what I should be doing by applying all the rules and theorems. Okay. So that's why in the class, as we were working on it, I was having you guys identify, right, which rule on the paper that you were applying. I'm not saying you have to do that during test time. That's not the case. But it just helps you so that you don't start making things up, okay? Because that happens a lot <laughs> in these higher level classes. People just start doing stuff and they're like, I think I could do that. <laughs> but in, in reality, you can't, okay, sometimes. So um, it really does help to kind of just refer always back to those rules. So like when we were doing example one and I was having you combine it into an expression of X, which is one exponent, right? I scribbled down those rules that we were using on the board, right? So that we knew how that was what it was. Okay. Um, it just helps. I'm not saying you have to do it. <laughs> That's just how I did it, so that I knew I was okay when I gave him my answer. Plus, you can't tell me it's wrong when I <laughs> literally told you where I referenced everything, right? The teacher can't be like, uh-uh, that's not right. It is, because you have how I did it and how I got it. Okay, so we're going to actually move on. You guys did great for 5.1. And I just want to make a note because we are running into our second, I guess, hour of class, and we have only gone up to 5.1. But I don't ever want you guys to feel 
weird about that because I will move at your pace. And right now we're going to be going slower than normal because we're just now starting this whole routine. Okay. So it's going to take a little while for us to get our pace and that's totally okay. Um, I do not ever try to just shove things <laughs> in just because I have a timeline. Okay. So we go as we go. And if I have to keep pushing things back and editing that timeline, then I will. Okay. It's not a big deal. So I don't want anybody to freak out that we haven't gone to 5.2 or 5.3 yet, but we are about to. So I'm going to stop my sharing right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and put up the next two pieces of paper so that we can start on 5.2. Now this one, you will have to use your summation formulas. So for those of you in Zoom, make sure that you go to Canvas and you click on the summation formulas file. And then for those of you in class, you have the actual paper version in front of you, right? Okay. Now this time we'll go backwards. So I'll have the people in Zoom do example one. And then those of us in class will do example two. Where is it going? So I'm going to put this one right next to those of you online are going to use your whiteboard. That one's not too bad, but it is worth a discussion. Dun, dun, dun. And this one, I don't just want you to apply the rule. So for those of you that are in Zoom, don't just apply the rule. I want you to explain to me why the answer is the answer. Okay. For this one, we will be applying all of the formulas and the summation rules and all of that stuff. Okay. So go ahead, whoever you guys will talk amongst yourself, or whoever you figure out to be your voice or your scribe for this one, have them open up the um, whiteboard and then you guys can begin. Let me make sure that my whiteboard is enabled. Yes, it's still enabled. So I'm going to go on mute and you guys work on example one. So we're meeting now. I think we're. I think so. Yes. yes. I think so. Okay. I honestly do not know how to explain, but I could tell you it's like C plus C like five times, and it would be like five C the answer. But how would you explain that? I, I think, I think yeah. Uh, I don't know if it'd be five C or if it would be six C because like. What was the like, number? Because uh, it, it, just, it says five Oh, you know there. what? Yes, you're right. It's six C. Yes, you are right. But Let's see, how I, I would you explain that? Yeah. I think you kind of already did explain it, I guess. Like, because it was it's adding C six times because it starts at zero, but then it goes up to five. And five. I mean, I don't, I don't know, though. Like, that's that's where I find it difficult trying to explain it. Because, like, I, I would know the answer, but I just don't know what to say. Right. So we it starts out at zero, right? So it's yeah. like yeah. zero C plus one C plus two C plus three C all the way to four C. Five. Five C. But then our answer would be six C. Um, 
So it's C like a one? Or I guess so. It's like, it's just supposed to be like any, I think it's supposed to be like any constant number. Yeah, any, like, any constant, yeah. Um. So who wants to try to explain this? Yeah, so she, she is right at six C's or is the answer. Um, uh, I guess whoever, I can, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I don't know who was talking. No, I don't want to, I don't want to explain because I honestly, I'm very like, I can't explain myself. <laughs> I honestly today. can't, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I can't go for it. So I think, uh, I guess we'll it'll just be, it'll be written out as zero C plus one C plus two C plus three C plus four C plus five C, but it also, but it equals six C. Is that how it's written out or? That's how, well, I mean, that's how I write it out, but I don't know. I think it's just supposed to be just like six C's or like you just write the like oh, C C six times. Okay. So yeah. Yep. 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 One. And then just equals six C. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this. So. Wait, 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 wait. Getting sidetracked here. Where's my pen? So it's like that? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah, no, the whiteboard thing is kind of weird. I, I it was trying, it was hard to like try to find like the eraser and the pen and stuff. Right. <laughs>
and then divided by or close parentheses divided by six. Okay, last term. Uh, five parentheses five plus one divided by two. And all of its numbers, right? All of it. There's no more letters on there. You could totally use your calculator and figure that out. What would you get for the first term if you're using your calculator? Five. Oh, I thought it was enough. <laughs> six. Five. Thirty-six over four. Twenty-five. Yep. Twenty-five times nine is two twenty-five. So for the first term, don't write it up there. Write it down. Put equals. Go ahead. Uh, okay. And then the first one is two twenty-five. Two twenty-five. Point right. Nope. That's it. Uh -huh. And then put plus. You have 14 times 5 times 6 times, is that 11? So those cancel. What's this in your calculator? 7, 7, 7, And then the last one is what? 49 times 5 times 6 over 2. So that'll reduce. What's 49 times 15. 735. And now what is that? Oh. 1730. Okay, I took us off of me because I noticed you guys were already done. <laughs> so yes, you did explain exactly what I wanted you to explain on your problem. So go ahead and come off of mute and explain where all of the C's came from. And then we'll go ahead and, and move over to example two so you guys will hear that one talk out. Sure, so... Um, uh, so oh, for, oh. I have you on mute. So if you were speaking, I apologize <laughs> but go ahead and, and explain the c's now um okay so yeah uh so, so all the c's come from um we had k equals zero so and it goes um i forgot what that little symbol uh what it's called it indexes it? yeah the index symbol with the five above it yeah okay so we start, you start from zero and you'd go to five. So, I mean, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's six C's in a sense. So that's why you would go six or C plus C plus C plus C plus C plus C. And then it comes out to equal to six C. Perfect. Uh, yeah. And kudos to the uh, class for doing that other problem because I know they're doing harder ones than us, but. <laughs> well, this time, yeah, y'all were doing some harder ones. <laughs> y'all did the harder one on example four. So yes, there's a little bit more complicated, but you're right. You get one C for K equal to zero, right? You get another C for K equal to one, another C for K equal to two, another C for K equal to three, for K equal to four, and then for K equal to five. And that's simply because there's no K in what you're, you're summing up, right? So there's nowhere to plug in the zero, the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. It just happens to be that variable C each time we try to plug in a K value. And so when you add up each of those six terms, you do end up with the six C. Now, if you're looking at your paper, now I will never ask you how to do that again, <laughs> because you do have a summation formula that tells you that that's the answer, right? But notice the difference in the formula versus what I wrote on the paper or what they wrote on the whiteboard. Notice that the index on the formula, there's a little arrow pointing right to it. Do you see what that index starts at? There's a little arrow on the print, if you're looking at the print. Do you see where the index starts? It starts at one, right? 
And ours did not start at one, it started at zero, right? Which is why we could not apply this summation formula. We had to revert back to like, what does summation mean, right? You plug in each one of your indexes and then whatever you get, that's the next term. And you plug in the next index and then that's the next term. And then you plug in the next index and that's the next term. It just so happened there was nowhere to plug in K. So each time they tried, they kept getting C, okay? And then when you sum up all of those terms, that's where they got to. Now, this usually doesn't happen. They don't usually give you an index starting at zero. Typically, we will be starting our indexes at one, but I brought this up to point that out, to pay special attention to those indexes, okay? So if you see an index on your paper that has a one for your formula, but your problem has a zero, you're going to have to do something. Now, I'm going to explain it, okay? So um, you guys can see, go ahead and stop sharing your, your board. Okay, I'm gonna write on 5.2, example one, just so I can show you how to work around that if you saw that. So if you saw the zero here, but you know that the rule can only be applied when it starts at one. Okay, the rule starts at one, not at zero. What you can do, is you can plug in zero. What am I going to get if I try to plug in zero for k? Zero. I heard a lot of answers. I know the people online know. Zero. You get c because there's nowhere to plug in k. So there's nowhere to plug in k. This is exactly what I'm going to get when I try to do so. Okay. So I get the letter c. Instead of doing k equal one, k equal two, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write what's left over. I already plugged in zero, didn't I? So if I were to continue where I left off, I would have to start at one, wouldn't I? Okay, so that's how you can rewrite it. So that if it does start at zero, you can write it so that it starts at one. All you have to do is plug in that zero and write down that term in the front. Let me give you another example. So let's say I'm doing um, I equal to zero to N of I squared. There is no formula for that on the sheet of paper. The formula on here starts at what? At one, it does not start at zero, right? It starts at one on the formula sheet. So what you could do is you could plug in zero. What do I get when I plug in zero? Coincidentally, it turns out to be zero. So then if I'm adding zero, it turns out it's gonna be the exact same thing as the formula, right? Okay. And so that's how you'll deal with it. If for some reason it does happen, I have seen it happen, which is why I thought it was worth mentioning, okay? So when you're doing your homework, pay special attention. If it's a one, you can apply the formula. See, now here I can apply my formula. N, N plus one, two N plus one, all over six, right? But before I could not apply the formula because of that index. Okay. So I just wanted to show you how to do it. You just plug it in and then just say, I'm not going to plug in the rest of them. I will later. Right. You're just rewriting it. Okay. Who wants to be the voice for this one? Not the person that had the pencil. <laughs> and let me zoom in because I'll use two um, pages there. There we go. There was a lot of thinking going on, so you might see scribbles. <laughs> but we were thinking about this one. Okay, only because of time services, I'm going to walk out what you get, but I don't want to have to do that again. Okay. Um, you guys are still shy. <laughs> you guys are going to break it. Do you want to do it? Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, go for it. All right, so the I plus seven, um, I plus seven, you got put together. Oh, I plus seven squared, I put together. So you get this right here. And then you multiply it by I. So I, so I, so I squared is I do. I plus I, uh, I plus I, or 14 I is I squared. And Plus forty nine is I uh, plus forty nine I, and then 
to separate them um, by what is this one again? Sigma. By sigma mm -hmm. on each of them. And then after that, I forgot what you do here. You did two steps in one. Steps you one. applied your formula, but you also took out your coefficients. So the first one, first term, did not have a coefficient, right? The IQ. Mm -hmm. So you just applied the formula. To this one? Uh huh. And, and is that, it like n plus? It is. It's n squared, n plus one squared over four, right? That's the formula. Yeah. But our n was what? English. Exactly. So then, after we get this, we multiply it by 14. And, and then that was the formula for what? From this, sir? No. No, I That's the second term. He wrote it downward instead of across. Yeah. So here, this one? Yeah. It was the top term. Oh, but this one. And then, right, exactly right. Well, so, yeah, so you just cut all these equations and the equations will get from here. And then you get 225 from this one, seven, uh, 770 from the second equation, and 735 from the third equation. You get 1732. 1,700. Let me make sure that that is correct. Yep, that is correct. Yay. Does anybody have any questions about that one? Did you understand? Give me thumbs up if you understand. Let's see if there's a delay. That, uh, that second one there, is that a dash 114 and then in quotations? It's a plus oh. and then 14. Got it. Okay. And then you just basically do. That equation that's in the quotations divided by six, and then you times it by 14. Exactly. Okay. So we did five times six times 11, and then divided by six, and then that result got multiplied by 14. Got it. Okay. I'm good. Anybody else? I promise you, as we keep working, you guys will be writing a lot more eloquently. <laughs> But that's why I wanted to do it in class as well, is so that I could see the way you guys. Did she leave us again? Yep, we're picked out again. <laughs> oh boy.
Okay, we lost connection. Are you guys with me now? Yes, we are. We're still here. I have gotten kicked out twice now, which is going to be a nightmare when I try to edit my YouTube videos. Because every time it kicks me out, it like stops the recording it's and then deep starts deep. it again. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to combine these like three videos together. <laughs> um, but that's all on me, not on you guys. So don't worry. Um, let me put back my camera. And all we did was find each of those areas and then add everything together. So I'm going to move my camera a little bit so we can see the next thing. So let me go a little bit wider and move that there. So now we have finished with the left hand side, and I did mention that um, since all of our rectangles were underneath our graph, that this um, area that we found is actually going to be the lower area. When I go to do the right hand rectangles, I'm expecting to see the rectangles go over a little bit, and then that would give me my upper area, right? This is just an estimate. The more and more rectangles, I think you saw in another video, right? The more and more rectangles you put in here, the more accurate your estimate gets. These two numbers get so close to each other that they're essentially the same. And so then you have a really good estimate of your area. Okay, so for here, when I do my rectangles, I want to do right in point. So if this is where my rectangle is going to go, this is the right hand side, and it actually hits the graph here, doesn't it? Now I'll redraw that rectangle there. Then if I'm talking about this width here, so this rectangle here, it actually has right in would have a height there. And then again, this width rectangle would have a height of here. So then that gives me that rectangle. And then finally, the last one has a height up there. And it does give me a little bit of overage up there. So y'all guys didn't see that. This is going to be crazy. Or it's going to be crazy. There we go. So we took the right hand part of this uh, interval and we found its Y to get the height, the right hand side of this to get the height. The right hand side of this rectangle to get the height, and then the right hand side of that rectangle to get the height. So, when we go to find the areas of these things, it's going to be the first rectangle, second rectangle, third rectangle, and finally the fourth rectangle. So, how do I calculate the area of the first? What is the width? I over eight. I over eight. And actually, it's the same width for all of these, isn't it? So it's actually I'm going to do the reverse of if each one of these have a pi over eight, couldn't I factor out the pi over eight, right? And so then all I'm essentially doing is just adding up all of those pi, okay? And then we'll multiply the pi over eight, pi over eight later. So what is the height of this one? It's actually going to be sine of pi over eight. The height of the second rectangle is going to be sine of pi over four. The height of the third one is going to be sine over three pi over eight. And then finally, the last height is going to be sine over two. Ah, the to is in there. <laughs> pi over two. Okay, great. So then now go ahead and calculate all that. You can literally type this whole thing in your calculator. I know we're approaching that time already. Sorry. We'll just finish this one up and then we'll be good for the day. Yeah, no, I know. Sure, you're going. Five point three is so short, so we will be able to throw that one in stuff quickly, no problem. Did anybody get an answer there? So lots of type in. So I got the decision. I got 1.1883. Yeah. 4, 7. 3, 4, 7. So then that will round the five, right? Which is good. And so then, and that actually is a higher value than what we had over here. So it is our greater um, area there. Now that doesn't mean, and I have to be very careful because that doesn't mean 
then always your left hand points are going to be the lower ones and your right ones are going to be the, the upper ones. Because what happens if my graph looks like this? It's an example. But what happens if my graph were like that? Right? Then if I were to cut my thing up into four or whatnot, um, notice that the left hand will do that. Ignore this. The left hands are actually going to be above this time. Right? Here's my Y. And then here's my Y. And we go there. So I don't want you to think that just because we did the left, that's always going to give me the lower one. It really truly depends on what the picture looks like. Okay. Because then here, if I were to do the right hand one, they would be shorter. Right? If I were to do the right hand one, it would be flat right there, actually. It would be shorter. So pay special attention. That's why I always say it's super important that you draw them. And since we're not able to use graphing calculators, um, and that's that was a choice that the department made, so don't blame me. <laughs> it was not my fault. But the department is the one that said we should be using scientific calculators only. And the reason is because I need you guys to start practicing how to draw. And I need you guys to start practicing your mental math with exponents and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, you can type in expressions. So if you have like these things, right? That is just an expression with a bunch of signs and numbers. It is not actually an algebraic expression. It's just a numeric expression. And those of you are totally okay to type in a calculator. The cool thing about the scientific calculator is you can put in there whatever you want and it's okay to do during the test. The thing about the graphing one, is that you can put something in that calculator that I'm expecting to see you do by hand. And then now you don't get the points because you didn't do it by hand, you used your calculator, right? So that's where the discrepancy comes in. So I did have a couple of people ask me if they can use graphic calculators. You can use them while you're doing your homework. I don't advise it, only because then you get used to using it while you're doing the homework. And then when you are not able to use it on the test, you're kind of at a loss, like what do I do, right? So I really, really, really highly recommend y'all use the be used to using the scientific ones and not the graphic ones. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that problem? We are gonna stop here. No. Okay. So when we come back, I have one more example from example two, and it's one of the crazy. Um, I'll put it up here just so that the students on Zoom can see. Um, but it is one of these problems where you have the limit and the ends and all that good stuff, right? So we got a little kind of taste of it with example two, but we're going to do the big whammy when we come back on Wednesday, okay? And then I have a couple of them from 5.3, but 5.3 was super nice because all it was was just like write the integral for the picture, right? Or here's the picture, write the integral. So it was a you know, they give you the picture and they want the integral, or they give you the integral and they want the picture. It's not too, too bad, okay? But when they give us the integral and no picture, that does give us some extra practice, right? Out of breath. Um, so that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. If you don't have any questions, I will see you all Wednesday. Again, we are going to move at our own pace, right? So no worries if I got to push deadlines back and all that good stuff. Okay? Thank you. Yes, you have a good one. Thank you. Happy Monday. You too, you too. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Trust me, it was the case for some of the editors. Thank you.